The Sony FX30 is probably still the most slept on affordable cinema camera in the filmmaking space. And I've been using it on a long-term basis. I used it for an unbelievable amount of real estate videos in the blistering hot sun of Nashville, Tennessee last summer. I've used it for a ton of YouTube videos and I even sold my full frame Sony a7S III because I just kept using the FX30 instead of my full frame camera. So I think this camera is still, spoiler alert, the most bang for buck camera you can buy right now. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. We'll talk about them a little bit later. The first good thing about this camera I have to mention is its live streaming capability. I could nerd out about this and guess what? I'm gonna. Hands down, the coolest thing about the live streaming function of this Sony camera and some of the newer Sonys is that you can just plug a USB-C cable into the camera and it transforms into a webcam. I've been doing that on my gaming channel using the FX30 and sometimes I've streamed for four to six hours. It's never even given me an overheating warning. What kind of vibe of music are you looking for on your droppage? Something Tom Cruise. <laughs> oh! The FX30 is an insane live streaming camera. It's underrated for sure, and it's one of my favorite features about this camera. And the thing I keep telling my friends about with the FX30, because I keep recommending it to people, is that it's so much more than just a video camera. This camera also shoots really great 26 megapixel photos. This is definitely not a photo first camera. I mean, it's called a cinema camera for a reason, but it absolutely gets the job done. The raw photos look incredible. The next thing that I absolutely love about the FX30, and this is one of the things that made me sell the a7S III, is the body design. This camera doesn't only look cool with the sleek kind of matte gray cinema line design. Bars. Bars or no bars? Bars. Bars. <laughs> I do like box style cinema cameras for certain productions, but honestly, this is a nice middle ground where it's a tiny rectangle, but it still has a nice hand grip, so it feels kind of like a DSLR mirrorless camera, but looks more like a cinema camera. For me, it's just a win-win but they've managed to pack in incredible features into this tiny, uniquely designed body, like a full-size HDMI, the USB-C that we talked about, there's a headphone jack, obviously your mic cable, a zoom rocker on top of the camera, which I have set up to use clear image zoom, which is Sony's feature where basically it digitally zooms in on your footage without losing quality somehow. It's just a small zoom, but it can save you in a pinch if you need it. The buttons are all really well placed. You have the red lights that light up all over the camera, so you absolutely know you're recording. It has plenty of quarter 20s on top of the body if you want to mount a rail or a monitor or something like that. But what I like about this design is I don't feel like I have to add a cage to make it look or feel like a cinema camera. I can just use this little bracket that I have attached on the side, which I'll link below. And it gives me the Arca Swiss plate on the bottom so I can quickly mount my stuff on tripods and gimbals and whatnot. But also I have dual card slots. And really quick, I just have to say, this absolutely saved my cheeks one time. For whatever reason, I was filming an interview last summer and one of the cards just stopped working and it actually corrupted all the files on that card. But the dual slot saved all that footage on the second card absolutely saved my cheeks because I was like 45 minutes into a recording. So I just don't use cameras that are single slot only at this point. Plus with this FX3, FX30 style body, you have the internal fan, which is probably one of the reasons why this thing never freaking overheats even in the summer. But the main responsibilities of the FX30 is to be a cinema camera. It's titled cinema camera after all. So does it actually get that job done? Last year, I took this camera on a trip to Los Angeles and filmed this huge vlog documentary style video about a premiere of a film called Spider-Man Lotus. Maybe you saw that video, maybe not. I put this camera in the hands of my friend Josh Hart, who's an incredible DP camera operator. After I got that footage back, I realized if you know what you're doing with this camera, like Josh does, because he's just talented, the footage can look absolutely amazing, like rivaling cameras way more expensive than it for sure. Sony's color science in this camera looks really nice. I even think it may look a little better than the a7S III. They're really close, but I think when they switched over to the FX line, I don't know if they did something different with the color science, but I just like it a little bit better on the FX30. And I've noticed that editing this footage in DaVinci Resolve, I can use my little highlight tool, a slider, and get a ton of information back from the highlights on this camera. If you overexpose by a half or one stop, you can get a ton of detail back in the highlights on this camera. And you get all the codecs that you get in the FX3 or the A7S III. You can shoot the all intra, really high megabit thing, you know, the nice quality stuffs. You get it in the FX30. 
And I know we all want the highest quality possible from our cameras, but if we don't have a place to showcase that, we probably won't get hired. That's where Squarespace comes in. I've actually been using Squarespace since 2016 to show off my best photo video work and to book clients directly through my website. If you're like me, you have absolutely no coding experience and no desire to learn coding. I don't wanna code. Squarespace makes website building so easy with their stylish templates that you can select and then customize to be your own. Just check if your domain is available for purchase, snag it directly through Squarespace, and you're off to the races, baby. I kept my site minimal and easy to navigate. After adding my custom logo, brand colors, some images, and a bit of text, my new updated website, zachmayfield.com, is now live. The main thing I wanna do on my site is sell digital products, and maybe I'll just leave a secret little free something something on my website if you guys wanna go check out Squarespace. They make it so easy to sell stuff with their built-in shop and their flexible payments, so you can accept cards, PayPal, Apple Pay, and more. If you wanna start your own website, then go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to show it off to the world, go to squarespace.com slash Zach Mayfield for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. This is something I actually think will help you guys along your creative endeavors. So if you support my sponsors, it directly supports my work and allows me to make more fun videos for you guys. So now here's a super smooth transition where I say. Also the autofocus. I know not everybody loves autofocus, but if you don't, you're wrong. Even with more affordable Sigma lenses like I use, I have the 16 millimeter F 1.4, I believe it is. Yeah, this lens, by the way, is awesome for gimbal work because it's wide, but you can get shallowed up the field if you're shooting in like darker situations. Like I was last year doing real estate, the lighting would be all over the place. So this lens, highly recommend. The autofocus is still good, even though it's an older lens because the AF on this camera is just so freaking reliable. It has the touch tracking autofocus, which I think is a slept on setting in Sony cameras. If you enable that touch tracking, you can use the screen to select your subject and then move your camera around wherever you want and it just stays locked onto that thing, which is crazy. But you also get the other autofocus settings like cars, comedians, coffee, everything you want, it will focus on it. The stabilization is also great in this camera. You do get a little bit of a crop with the active stabilization, but if you're shooting wide, you, you can just step back a half step if you want, it's up to you. The flip out screen is pretty good quality. It's bright enough. It does look a little bit lower contrast than some other Sony screens, but it still looks fine on the FX30. But it's not a perfect camera because no perfect camera exists other than this one. This is the Sony Handycam. What's the model number? DCR TRV 260. I've made the best films of my life with this thing, and the FX30 will never compare. Uh, come on. Okay, for real, the cons. The first one is that there's no electronic viewfinder. If the little flip out screen isn't enough for you, you might have to rig it out with an external monitor like a Ninja or a small HD, something. The next con is not fully bad, but it's the dual native ISO of 800 and then 2500. I don't know what it is, but the shadows on this camera are just dirtier than other cameras, specifically the FX3 and A7S III. I think that sensor is just kind of an anomaly. The 12,800 somehow looks so, so good. Good. The 2500 ISO on the FX30, it just, it doesn't look quite as good. If you have plenty of light shooting outdoors or you're flooding the frame with enough light to keep it clean, then it's fine. But if you're kind of run and gun in a darker situation, 2500 still doesn't look that great. You can combat that with really fast lenses or <laughs> lighting your scenes, but I just wanted to throw that out there just in case you don't use any lights or fast lenses. Next con is the 4K 120 frames per second. I appreciate the fact that Sony put it in this camera, but to me, I just never use it. It feels a bit useless because it has a relatively significant crop. And when you punch in on that crop in 4K 120, the noise pattern gets kind of blown up. You see more noise. It's more evident. It's murkier, a little muddier. You could use it in a pinch if you need to. You could also denoise it, especially in Resolve. The denoise is amazing, but I would say the 4K 120 is just kind of meh with this camera. And the last big con for me is the fact that this camera didn't ship with shutter angle. And I know it's coming in a future firmware update, but the fact that it just didn't ship with that is so annoying to me. And there is a little bit of rolling shutter in the footage of this camera, but I've literally never noticed it. I've just heard other people on YouTube talk about it. So I figured I'd mention it and maybe I'll show a test or something. But in my real world experience with this camera, not one time have I done a handheld shot or something and been like, wow, that looks pretty jello-y. It looks good. It's not as fast of a readout as the FX3, but it's more than enough to get professional jobs done. So 
I guess that leaves us with a couple of questions. One, is this camera worth it? And two, if it is worth it, who the heck is it for? I would recommend this camera to literally any person that is doing primarily video or live streaming, but not people who are mainly photographers. And I think that's obvious, you know, it's called a cinema camera. And in terms of videography or cinematography, I think it does 95, maybe 98% of what the FX3 does. It just doesn't have that huge low light boost and it's not full frame. When I made the behind the scenes videos for the Dr. Disrespect commercial and the Tim the Tapman commercial, the camera operator for the BTS was using the FX30 with the top handle. The reason is that top handle has a pretty good XLR shotgun microphone with a windscreen, but also you can put a lav pack on the camera and run a lav at the exact same time. Technically, you actually get four channels of audio, so you could have three wireless lavs and the shotgun mic if you want to. You could get creative with how you rig the audio into that top handle and the preamps and everything are relatively good. At the end of the day, this camera could be your A cam, your B cam, your C cam, your live streaming cam, your crash cam. This thing can literally do it all. And it made me sell my full frame Sony camera, which is wild because I was in love with the A7S III, pocketed that money, and maybe I'll use it to invest in the FX31. Who knows? But either way, thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Make sure you like this channel and subscribe to this video. Drop a comment below and let me know, would you actually buy a Sony LUT pack made custom by me and sold on my website? Watch out for deer because they're literally surrounding us at all times and I will fight them to protect my family. And text me when you get home so I know you're safe. You are so loved and I will see you in the next video. Bye.